Je vais vous parler de la position des... I'm going to tell you about the position of the players of innovation and economic players in the face of the challenges of biodiversity. What do we mean by innovation? There are various types of innovation. Basically, there are three. The first type is social innovation. Social innovation is everything that concerns the management of common goods and services. There are social challenges, health, education, and environmental challenges, preservation of biodiversity, reduction of the effects of climate change. It's what could be called the social economy of solidarity. Everything is very important here economically. How can you implement this type of innovation? Bearing in mind that, as with any type of innovation, uh, one of the key questions is what is the economic model? How can the stakeholders of social innovation uh, be paid and be recognized and acknowledged by broader society? A second type of innovation is the environmental innovation, nature-based solutions, the idea is that in our interactions with nature, our exploitation of nature, we need to develop modes of interaction which are much more compatible with the environmental operation of the planet and the way ecosystems work. This is typically what happens with agroecology, much more use of the ecological systems or environmental economy, an economy articulated around environmental functions or ecosystemic services, for instance, payment uh, of the stakeholders who are going to help to store carbon through forests and so on in order to mitigate climate change and global warming. Third type of innovation that often exists and that is uh, uh, the easiest to envision is technological innovation which concerns aspects of the modes of production of energy that produce less greenhouse gases or renewables, such as um, solar or wind power, or in agriculture, precision agriculture, with uh, GPSs, with robots, with machinery, which uh, uh, becomes ext become extremely precise in their perception of their environment, or synthetic biology with GMOs and now rewriting the genome. And here the economic model is uh, uh, based on patents. So you file a patent that protects your technological invention, and based on that you can develop a whole set of devices or machines uh, that will be uh, sold, and uh, that is how you obtain payment of your research, through what is known as techno-sciences. So the question that, that emerges is what is the potential of these various types of innovation to uh, preserve biodiversity? Can social, environmental or technological innovation have a true impact? Scientifically, this remains a very important question, but basically academics are not in a position to say which type of innovation is will be uh, will have the most significant impact what academics do note is that until now social and environmental innovations were relatively uh, unidentified so there's probably a lot of potential there uh, that can be tapped in all three cases the issue of the economic model emerges of course in terms of this economic model the state uh, voters have an extremely important part to play because the state, through legislation, taxation, quotas, can decide to encourage certain economic models versus others in terms of, for instance, of uh, pollution levels. When the state funds fossil fuels such as coal, uh, the funding is about 500 billion a year in subsidies. And of course, these subsidies and voters decide to help activities that generate a lot of pollution. If you could change the rules of the economic game by getting rid of these subsidies. So the question that remains is this market regulation through new legislation, new incentives, is this something that makes sense in economic terms? 
Porter's hypothesis, Porter's an economist, and what Porter has noted is that usually when you create new regulations through legislation uh, for the environment, it tends to be beneficial to businesses, especially uh, those who comply with environmental rules, which is why most recently uh, U.S. multinationals protested when the U.S. government decided to withdraw from the Paris Accord because they see that they may lose competitiveness in comparison to uh, businesses who will be subjected to more strenuous environmental constraints. So it can be beneficial economically, socially, and environmentally, and of course the environmental benefits have positive repercussions on the social and economic aspect. So in terms of all of these questions, what is the outlook? The first thing is what could be uh, called institutional tampering, where you have a number of institutions and conventions and it's not necessarily easy to modify them. And when you want to manage the environment better, you need to try and fiddle with existing institutions to create payments for environmental services, where farmers, for instance, would be paid uh, for their stewardship of the environment and of biodiversity. And these payments uh, could be a system um, that would be derived from existing subsidies. Another complex question is, do you need to pay uh, the uh, actors in terms of uh, the resources they use or the results? Do you pay for the effort or for uh, the result? And experts are not necessarily uh, the best to anticipate which methods will be the best. So there should be a little bit of leeway left to people in the field, and they would be paid on the results rather than for the results rather than for their intentions. And I would like to conclude these considerations by uh, trying to know where all of this is leading us. If we respect nature more, if we use less fossil fuels or less energy in general, maybe this could lead to reverse growth, that we would consume less material goods. What is important to note is that this is not only compatible with innovation, but it, that it needs innovation. Social, environmental and technological innovation will allow us, on the one hand, to have a, a quicker growth in the consumption of uh, material goods, but will also allow this reduction in consumption to be perceived positively by uh, society and by individuals, that it should result in better social and environmental wellness rather than a deterioration of human wellness. Thank you.